After the failure of the last couple years of not winning a world championship and the terrible start to 2019, I believe it's time Ferrari rebuilt their F1 team. So Ferrari can get back to what they were doing 15 years ago and that is dominating Formula 1. But how exactly and in what areas do Ferrari rebuild? Well in today's video I'm going to analyse where exactly Ferrari need to rebuild their team if they are going to be truly successful in the future. So if you want to find out where Ferrari need to rebuild make sure to check out this video. Now the first thing Ferrari need to do in rebuilding their team is firing one man. That man of course is the head of strategy at Ferrari, Inaki Rueda, who is so incompetent in his role. And for me, no one else at Ferrari deserves to be sacked more than he does. And right now, I'm going to show all of his mistakes and why exactly he should be sacked from Ferrari immediately. Let's get into them now. So first off is the 2016 Australian Grand Prix, where Sebastian Vettel, when the red flag came out for that race, was leading the Grand Prix. But then, Inaki made a terrible decision in putting Vettel on the softest compound of tyre, meaning that Sebastian would have to pit again, when what they should have done is put him on the same compound of tyre that Nico Rosberg behind was on, which was on the medium compound tyre. So, terrible decision there by Rueda. Then, we come to the Spanish Grand Prix of 2016, where they did wrongly put Sebastian Vettel on a three-stop strategy compared to Kimi Raikkonen, who was on a two-stop, who came very close to winning the Grand Prix. If Sebastian Vettel was on a two-stop, I think Sebastian would have won that Grand Prix for Ferrari. Then we have the race in Canada in 2016, where when Vettel was leading, a virtual safety car early on came out. But then Ferrari decided to pit Vettel and try and do a two-stop, but because Lewis Hamilton could do a one-stop and had enough pace to be able to pull it off, Ferrari failed to win a race that they really should have won. And then the final mistake in 2016 from Ferrari when it comes to strategy is the 2016 Austrian Grand Prix, where first off with Kimi Raikkonen, they started him on the wrong tyres. He started on the softest compound, which did not work at all. And then, after staying out too long on that softest compound, which was not performing well, he got jumped by both Red Bull drivers, and that led to Kimi Raikkonen finishing third and not possibly in P2. Then we come to 2018, where the mistakes continue to mount up. So we come to the Chinese Grand Prix in 2018, where Sebastian Vettel was leading the Grand Prix up until the first pit stop, Valtteri Bottas undercut past Sebastian Vettel because Ferrari reacted way too late to the undercut that was clearly working and I think that did lead to Sebastian's horrible race from then on in. Then in Baku in 2018, Sebastian Vettel was pitted too early for his first pit stop when what they should have done is waited a bit more to pit him and then they pitted him incorrectly in my opinion under the safety car that came out late on. Then, one race after that at the Spanish Grand Prix, they pitted Vettel for a second time under the virtual safety car whilst Sebastian was running in P2 because they thought the cars around them would also pit, but they didn't have to, and Sebastian ended up finishing in P4, where he really should not have finished based on the pace he had in that Grand Prix. Then we have Singapore 2018 where when Vettel, in the first stint of the Grand Prix, was ahead of Max Verstappen, again, Ferrari too late in reacting to other people's pit stops. Max Verstappen came in and undercut past Vettel, but also Ferrari put Vettel on the wrong tyres as he went to the ultra soft tyres, not the soft compound, which was clearly working a lot more than the ultra soft, and Sebastian Vettel withered away in the third place and then we have that calamity in qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka where Ferrari whether it was raining or it was dry was seemingly always on the incorrect tyres and that is what led to them starting the Japanese Grand Prix in P4 and P9 not P3 and P4 where they really should have started. Then we come to this year where first off at the Spanish Grand Prix in 2019 
they continued to put their drivers on wrong tyres. This time, though, the race was in the dry compared to qualifying at Suzuka in 2018. They continued to put their drivers on the wrong types of tyre that led to them finishing off the podium and behind Red Bull driver Max Verstappen. And then at Monaco, with Charles Leclerc clearly in danger of getting knocked out in Q1, Ferrari decided that he would make it through and there was no point in going out. But then he was knocked out of qualifying in 16th place. An absolutely terrible strategic decision once again by Anarchy Rueda. Now I will say, granted, he has made good decisions in the past. I'm not denying that. For example, like the 2015 Malaysian Grand Prix or the 2018 United States Grand Prix or even the race in Australia in 2018. I'm not denying that the guy has made good decisions in the past, but the negatives far, far, far outweigh the positives, and I don't see how this guy can possibly keep this role within the team. I don't see how he can. He has cost Ferrari so many points and so many chances of winning races and possibly doing even more in the respective championships. I just don't see how you keep this guy on. And after his time at Ferrari so far, it has become clear that this guy just isn't good enough. And if you're not good enough for a certain role you have, you don't deserve to keep it. So Ferrari have to get rid of this guy because if they don't, I don't see Ferrari ever winning a world championship because this guy will continue to make key mistakes which deny them vital points in both the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship. So please, Ferrari, get rid of this guy. But now let's come on to Mattia Bonotto. Now, this might be controversial, but I don't care. For me, Mattia Bonotto should also leave Ferrari because I don't believe he is good enough for the role he holds and that role of course is team principal of Ferrari now the reason I think this is because if you look at Ferrari compared to 2018 Mattia Bonotto has took the team backwards in almost every single area those areas being the drivers and also the team order situations that have happened this year and not being decisive in terms of the types of decisions he's making in certain situations. Also, not sacking Inaki Rueda is something he is as guilty of as Maurizio Arriva Bene was. How, again, this guy is still at Ferrari, I don't know, and Bonotto has to be held responsible for keeping someone at the team that quite clearly is incompetent. And also the engineering department at Ferrari has got worse. And also the aerodynamic and chassis development of the Ferrari car has got worse and is going backwards, not forwards. And if you compare 2018 to 2019, Ferrari have lost a significant amount of time in terms of lap time on track to Mercedes. And considering where they were in terms of pace on track to Mercedes in 2018, I'm sorry, that cannot be tolerated. Another two reasons I think he should go is because I don't think Ferrari will win a race this season because I don't think they are good enough as a team to do so. And that is disastrous for a team like Ferrari. But also, Mattia Bonotto, as smart as he is when it comes to the technical side in certain areas, he doesn't have character, the type of character that you need to lead a team like Ferrari, and if you look at teams that have gone on to win world championships, their team bosses have big characters and big personalities, and Matai Bonotto doesn't have that. And I just don't see Ferrari ever winning a world championship with Matai Bonotto as their team principal. I never agreed with the decision for him to replace Arriva Bene, and I think now I have been proven right. Getting rid of Arriva Bene was always the wrong decision and I still don't get why Ferrari got rid of Arriva Bene when he was really the least of Ferrari's problems. But if Bonotto is to go, who do you bring in to that role to try and take Ferrari forward for the next few years? Well, for me, you should put 
current Alfa Romeo team principal Frederick Vasseur in that role as team principal because one he does have the character and personality to lead a team like Ferrari is a big character within Formula One is Frederick but also look at his track record at Sauber slash Alfa Romeo since he took over that team midway through 2017 when he took over Sauber they were not that far away from going out of business but he turned that team around got rid of the Honda engine deal for 2018 secured a new up-to-date Ferrari engine for 2018 and they started to move forward as from 2017 to 2018 they went from the back of the grid to almost at times at the front of the midfield that is real progress and that is because of the great leadership Frederick showed whilst team principal of Sauber from 2017 going into 2018 and even though 2019 for Alfa Romeo hasn't been great I think as a team they have still come forward compared to where they were say one year ago and I think because of that and the way he is as a person I think he is an ideal person to replace the Tai Bonotto as the team boss of the Ferrari F1 team make sure though in the comments guys to let me know if there's other people out there that you think would be better suited to this role but for me Frederick Vasseur would be a great person in that role now let's get on to the drivers Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel now this is a difficult area right now to look at because there's no real clarity as of yet as to who is the absolute better driver out of these two Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc right now Sebastian definitely has been the better driver so far in 2019 but I think we need to wait with Charles Leclerc to see whether in the rest of this season he does improve his results on a consistent basis and start to beat Vettel and I think to see who is the better driver we are going to have to wait until the very end of this season to see who is better out of Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc but the reason this is important to do you know look at who finishes ahead in this battle at the end of the season is because Ferrari for the next few years they've got to select someone who they want as a driver to take them forward going into 2021 2022 and 2023 now ideally what they're hoping for is that Charles Leclerc comes into his own and becomes the superstar driver that he showed he could be back in Bahrain and also at times in Baku if he can do that then I think in an ideal situation selecting Charles Leclerc as your lead driver going forward for the future would be the thing to do but if Sebastian Vettel does beat Charles Leclerc this season then you can't exactly get rid of Vettel and start building the team around Leclerc because Leclerc if he does get beaten by Vettel has clearly showed that he's not yet ready to lead a massive team like Ferrari forward so what they have to do is let the drivers race and see who is better and hopefully for them it's Charles Leclerc because of course he is younger and it would be easier to build the team around Leclerc right now than it would be Sebastian Vettel who is coming to the end I think of his Formula One career but the very important and last thing Ferrari need to do is to make sure they don't concentrate absolutely everything on 2020 right now because of course we have a massive regulation change coming for 2021 and because that new set of regulations is so close for me what Ferrari need to do right now is start to build their team with a look towards 2021 because in 2020 they're not going to become magically successful right away and it's only one year before this massive new set of regulations just look at Mercedes as an example back in 2011 when the new v6 hybrid rules for 2014 were announced Mercedes decided to concentrate their development towards the v6 hybrid regulations because they saw that the v8 era was coming to an end and they couldn't build a car quick enough to be successful in the V8 era before the V6 era began so again decided to concentrate their development on 2014 
And now Mercedes are the best team in Formula 1 ever since. And they fully deserve it because they had the foresight to build everything for 2014 and it worked out so, so well. And that for me is what Ferrari need to do. Build your development program and your team towards 2021 and hope that all that hard work really does come out and is showed in 2021 if you do have the best car on the grid. But if Ferrari tried to concentrate everything on 2020 when there's a new set of regulations right around the corner that is massive, then I fear that Ferrari might start that new era of Formula 1 a bit behind from where they want to be. So I think it's time for this team to admit defeat and start building for 2021 because realistically, that is the earliest I see Ferrari being able to beat Mercedes. And hopefully Ferrari do do that, but this is Ferrari at the end of the day, and they do tend to make so many boneheaded decisions. You never know, they might mess up 2021, even if they focus everything on that new set of regulations. But let's hope this team does start to improve because we need Ferrari up there to compete with Mercedes because I think it is good for Formula 1 when we do have at least two teams going at it for race wins and also pole position. So hopefully Ferrari soon enough do get their act together, but it won't be for a while. And I think a new Ferrari for 2021 and beyond is the answer to their current issues. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to comment down below what you thought of this video and also comment down below where do Ferrari for you need to rebuild and how do you think they do that, say step by step. Don't forget also to subscribe to this channel for more content like this and also like this video for more content like this and also just to let you guys know, I will be live on Friday night at 6.30 p.m. UK time or the practice to watch along for the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix. So until then guys, it has been me, Kazar HD. Goodbye.